So here's our examples for binary molecules. We're given the chemical formula, and we need to write the names of these. So the first one, we have N2O5. This is one of the easier ones to have because both of these elements actually have a subscript that is not one. So we have two nitrogens and five oxygens. So when we have that, remember we use the prefixes di, tri, tetra, penta, and so on and so forth. So this would be dinitrogen. And remember, whenever we name the first element here, we don't change the name of the element. Okay, We do put the di in front of it because there's two of them, but we keep it as nitrogen. Right? However, for the second one, we still need the prefix for five, which is pent or penta. And we have to change the second element to its anionic name. So it wouldn't be oxygen, it would be oxide. So we'd have dinitrogen pentoxide. Okay? And this would be the name of this binary molecule. So notice for the first element, which is nitrogen, we don't change that at all. It's just nitrogen. But for the second one, we do have to change it to its anionic name. So instead of oxygen, it would be oxide. Also notice that the technical uh, prefix would be penta, but if we put oxide after that, we'd have an A and an O in a row. We don't want that usually, so we're gonna cross out the A and it would just become pentoxide, okay? All right, our second example is CO2. We wanna name this one, and you might already know what this is based on a biology class. But in this case, our first element, which is carbon, only has one of them, okay? So when the first element only has one, then we don't actually put the mono, and that's only when it's the first one. So instead of saying monocarbon, we would just say carbon, all right? No mono because it's the first element. If it were the second element, we would have to put mono, okay? And then let's go to this one. There's two oxygens, so we're gonna say di, and then we have to remember that the second element, we use its anionic name, so it would be oxide, okay? Now in this case, we still have two vowels in a row, but it's an I and an O. We don't cross out any of those, so it just remains dioxide. It's really when we have one of those prefixes that ends in an A, like pentaoxide, okay? So this is carbon dioxide, right? Let's look at our third example. In this one, we have CO, there's one carbon and one oxygen. Now again, when the first element, there's only one of it, we don't put mono. So we're just gonna start this one off with carbon, okay? However, for the second element, which is oxygen, even though there's also one of these, because it's the second element, we do have to put the prefix mono for one. So this would be mon, and I'll show you why I only put that in a minute. And then, of course, oxygen becomes oxide because we name it according to its anion. So it would be oxide, right? Now, in this case, again, if we put mono and then put oxide, we would have two O's in a row. Okay? And we don't want that. It would be like monoxide. We don't want that clearly. So we're going to cross out the first O and it just becomes monoxide. In the same way when we had pentaoxide, it just becomes pentoxide. Okay? Now for our fourth example, we have here P2S5. So two atoms of phosphorus and five atoms of sulfur. This one's gonna follow a similar rule to what we had at the top. This is one of our simpler ones. So again, we have two phosphorus atoms, so we're gonna say di, diphosphorus, okay? And again, we don't change the name phosphorus because it's the first element. However, the second element is sulfur, so we'll have to name this one according to its anion. So sulfur as an anion would be sulfide, okay? And there's five of them, so we're gonna put penta and then sulfide. And again, in this case, because sulfide starts with an S, we don't have to worry about these vowel rules that we had in the third example and the first one, okay? So diphosphorus pentasulfide. And now let's look at the very last one. So let me actually kind of fold this so we can see it a little bit better. It's in the screen. All right, so here we just have H2O. Now, this is clearly water, okay? But if we want to name it according to 
uh, these binary rules, we need to follow what we did up here. So we have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So for the first one, we are going to have di hydrogen because there's two atoms of hydrogen. And then of course the oxygen, we have to name this according to its anion, but also because there's one of them and it's the second element, we do have to put the mono prefix or just mon monoxide. Okay. And again, we change it to oxide because it's the second element. And again, in the same way as we saw before, if we put out mono and then put oxide, we don't want two O's in a row, so we have to cross out one of them. The first one, it just becomes monoxide. And actually, whenever you see those memes on the internet that say, beware of the dangers of dihydrogen monoxide, which of course is a joke, which is water, there's obviously not dangers in water unless it's a tsunami, but again, what they're doing is they derived this name from our binary rules. And so dihydrogen monoxide is really just the fancy term for water or H2O. They're of course doing it to sound smart so that you know people who don't know these rules can't follow the code and so forth. All right, so hopefully these rules make sense to you for naming binary molecules. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.